All right, let's bring our meeting to order. Um, Chair, did you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Barton? Here. West? Here. Van Essen? Here. Collins? Here. Okay, very good. Uh, um, Director Zeidenbach, do we have any changes to our agenda this evening? Uh, no, we do not. Very good, thank you. So at this time, we would open up for any public discussion of an item that is not on our agenda for the evening. Is there anybody that would like to address the commission? Seeing none, we'll move on then. Um, approval of our meetings, or our minutes from last meeting. Did we have a chance to review those and do I have a motion on that, or comments? I will move to approve. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. I've, I've got, got it. Thank you. Very good. Then they are adopted on a vote of three to zero. Excellent. So we will move on then to discussion items. We have a major site review. And um, the way that this will go is that I will announce the item to be heard. Uh, city staff, staff will present their report and their recommendation. I'll open up a public hearing and the order of testimony will go like this. The applicant, anyone in favor, anyone in opposition may speak and then the applicant will have a chance to rebut uh, any opposition. We'll ask you to take uh, the podium here if you want to testify and please state your name and address before you give your testimony. Uh, we'll, we will then um, I will then close the public portion of it. We'll have our discussions and uh, our vote. Any ap appeals can be made before the city council. If you need to, to make an appeal based on um, the decision that we make, you can get with one of us or with Ken or Mitzi and, and they can explain the process to you. So at this time, I'll hand it over to you, Director Zeidenbart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow commissioners. At this time, I'd like to introduce the staff report into record. Uh, the request, uh, is for a major site plan permit to construct roughly about a 49,000 square foot self storage facility on two parcels totaling about 3.24 acres in the light industrial zoning district that you can see here on the uh, vicinity map. Um, the proposed project is located along South Parallel Avenue, uh, bounded by uh, single family residences to the north, a parking lot and city well site to the east, um, which is the entrance over there to the bike bridge as well. Highway 99 to the south and existing um, existing commercial business to the west. Uh, the project site is currently uh, designated for light industrial land uses within the city of Ripon's general plan and is zoned light industrial within the city of Ripon's uh, zoning map. Um, the applicant is proposing a development of a 255 unit storage self storage facility at the site consisting of about 32 units on site that are 10 by 10 in size, approximately 211 units that are 10 by 20 in size, um, one unit that's 10 by 25 in size, and approximately 11 units that are 10 by 30 in size. So they have a little bit of varying um, sizes within their, within their self storage. Um, additionally, the site will contain a small office space, which is kind of located at the entrance there, about 300 square feet uh, with associated parking uh, for unit rentals and site supervision. Um, you can see the office space is in the darker gray on the screen. And then here's kind of an elevation view of what the office would look like. Um, the 40, uh, 49,000 square foot facility will sit approximately 10 feet off of, um, from the front property line, which is parallel Avenue, um, approximately 28 feet from the east property line, uh, which is Reynolds drive approximately 58 feet from the west property line um, due to some easements and approximately 25 feet from the north property line, which actually abuts up against uh, res residential homes. All setbacks except the front setback along Parallel Avenue um, for the facility exceed the minimum required by the light industrial district, which is 20 feet. 
Um, the, the roof of municipal code does allow for a reduced setback, which is normally 20 feet upon approval of the planning commission and the roof and consolidated fire department. And obviously with the planning commission's approval, um, basically uh, the, the staff is in favor of, of allowing the 10, 10 foot setback along parallel because it is uh, along the frontage road there and does face uh, actually just highway 99. So it doesn't affect a whole lot of folks. Um, the proposed buildings um, will be approximately 12 feet in height. They're not uh, very tall buildings, which does comply with the Ripon Municipal Code, um, which the maximum height for light industrial is 35 feet. So well, be well below that. Um, here's some a sample of kind of some buildings that the, uh, they, they would look like um, different variations of that. Um, there we go, another slide there. Um, access to the site will be provided by one commercial driveway um, off of, let me just zoom into it here, um, approach off of Parallel Avenue. Um, specifically, the proposed project will include a gated access point between the parking area uh, for the self-storage facility and the self-storage uh, units. The gated access point will be accessible via a kiosk uh, that will be connected to the office building. Um, an additional emergency access driveway. Let me zoom out and show you that. Um, we'll be located somewhere along Rental, Reynolds Avenue um, as approved by the fire department. Uh, this is for emergency access only. It will be a locked gate and not open to uh, for the public to access in and out. It would only be used um, for emergency purposes with the uh, fire department or police departments. Uh, the off-street parking facility for customers uh, provides for a total of three spaces. There's two standard spaces and one handicap, which does meet the number required by local regulations um, for self-storage units. The exterior of the storage buildings will be metal siding. Uh, color has yet to be determined. The exterior of the small of the uh, small office building um, will be metal siding as well in different orientations and colors with aluminum glass storefronts and metal canopies. Um, the applicant has also indicated the entire site will be fenced and gated and the proposed fencing material for the site will be an ornamental wrought iron type fencing. Let's see here. The site does contain about 12 and a half percent of landscaping uh, throughout the site, which does slightly exceed the city standard of 10% for the light industrial district. Um, they have submitted a fairly detailed plan, as you can see here, with uh, trees and shrubs uh, around the perimeter of the site. Um, upon initial review, the site does appear to contain adequate quantities uh, for trees and shrubs. However, uh, they have not, no quantities have been indicated on this plan, but they will be required to submit a, a more detailed plan uh, to the planning department and um, director of public works uh, prior to uh, getting their permit. The site plan does not depict any lighting um, on the site plan itself. However, a detailed lighting plan will be required to be submitted to the police department and planning department for review and approval, um, basically to ensure that adequate lighting is provided around the site and also to ensure that uh, uh, the lighting is shielded uh, away from residential so that the gla any glare would be contained uh, on site. Also indicated on the site plan is a trash enclosure. Let me zoom into that here for you. It's up in the upper uh, left-hand corner of the site, uh, located in the northern border. Uh, the trash enclosure will be required to be covered pursuant to city standards and the design and construction uh, will be um, architecturally compatible with the units on site. Um, all signage uh, for, for the project, will have to comply with, with our city standards. So they have not indicated any signage at this point, but they will be required to pull a separate sign permit for that uh, when they do move forward with that portion of the project. And then just a couple last slides here. Um, some notable, basically notable improvements that would happen with the improvement of this site is, as you can see, Parallel Avenue kind of along the bottom here. Uh, there's no curb gutter and sidewalk along there or Reynolds Avenue. Those will all be improved with the site with curb gutter and sidewalk. Reynolds Avenue will actually widen out uh, to be much like the northern portion of it here that goes uh, up to the residential area. Um, so that will be fully improved with, with this project. 
And then an, uh, one of the other notable um, improvements that would happen with this project is the undergrounding of the utility lines that are out there across the frontage of the project. Um, we did have a uh, project review meeting um, with the project review committee on June 8th and all the conditions of approval have been incorporated into the staff report that's in front of you this evening. And there is also a recommendation for approval in the staff report. So at this point, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would turn it back over to you and I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Thank you. Questions for Ken? Actually, going to get a bigger front yard out of this because it's going to get extended out. No, no. The, basically, there's this backs up to the masonry wall that's there, um, so they, they won't be, it won't yeah won't affect any residential lots. Can the um, uh, on the back side of this? Uh, abutting the residential area. We do have an eight foot masonry wall back there. Yes. Currently. Yep. Okay. And that trash enclosure sits up against that back wall. Yeah. It sits up in that upper left-hand corner of the site. You can see there is several easements along the, uh, I guess more the Western portion of the site. Uh, there's a fairly large PG and E easement. There's some overhead lines there. Um, that runs through the site. The city has a sanitary sewer easement. Uh, we do have a lift station that's uh, in the front of this site. And there is an SSJ easement over there. So that's why there's no uh, storage units in that area. Um, and the trash enclosure um, can't be in the easement areas. Okay. So where those easements are, that's going to be um, parking? Or um, it would be improved with uh, asphalt or concrete, whatever they choose on the site. They, they could utilize that. I mean, they could park some stuff there if they wanted to do some outdoor storage of RV or so like that in that area. That could be a, that could be an allowable use in that area. But yeah, they can't do any structures in, in those easement areas. Okay. That's part of the drive aisle then. Yeah, I mean, unless, of course, PG&E or, or SSJD or the city signs off on, on letting them do some improvements in the easements, it would have to be granted by whoever holds the easements. Have you seen that happen? Is that common or uncommon? It, it's not not really common at all. I mean, if we have to get into it, like say for our instance, if we have to get into our easement, um, we have underground sewer lines there, we'd have to dig it up, we'd have to basically remove a structure we don't want to be responsible for having to put that back. It wouldn't be on us. And then also there's probably some added cost just of removing it, you know, instead of, uh, of um, removing just asphalt and digging to get to the sewer line, you're now having to you know, demo a structure or something that's, that's, that's there. So I, I don't, I don't know what PG&E would think about doing something. They do have an overhead utility there. Uh, I don't think they have any underground, but if they can get permission to be located there, I mean, the city would be fine with that if, if they got written permission from any other easements and holders for that. Thank those you. Areas. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Would the applicant like to address the commission? And again, please state your name and address uh, before you, you give your testimony. Members of the commission, um, Roman Acosta, JB Anderson Land Use Planning, located at 139 South Stockton Avenue here in Ripon. Um, first off, I want to thank you for coming out to the special meeting. Um, I want to thank Ken for um, getting us through the process and getting us here tonight. Um, we're excited to present this project to you. We think it's a great use within an industrial area. Um, we are happy to help the city clean up and um, clean up the Reynolds Avenue easement as well as install sidewalks along with the bike lanes to allow folks who, to utilize the um, park and pedestrian bridge. Um, I have the applicant benchmark engineering here for questions as well as myself. Um, thank you. Yes, um, so ingress into the project, it looks like you've got, is it 10 feet? Um, 
or is it more than that before you hit the gate? In other words, is there sufficient room for a vehicle and oftentimes vehicles may have a trailer uh, with them for to move uh, storage items in 30 feet? Yeah, it's 30 feet. So, okay. and then we did do a fire truck turning radius analysis and it was deemed uh, sufficient. Okay, very good. Uh, also in the report, I didn't, and you made mention of it, I did not understand um, the uh, modifications to curb for the bike lane and the access to the trail that goes to the bridge. There's already a curb cut there now. So what, what else is being done or what's being changed? Um, so a condition of approval of the project would be to um, restripe Parallel Avenue to extend the class one, I believe, bike lane to go all the way to the city's parking lot there, um, as well as um, curb gutter and sidewalk improvements, which are not there now. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Costa, so you have... Um, you mentioned the conditions of approval. So can I assume that you have reviewed the entire staff report along with the conditions and the requirements for the project? Yes. You have, okay. And are you prepared to carry out all of the conditions and these requirements? Yes. Very good, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Yes, is there anyone else that would like to speak uh, on behalf in favor of the project? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to the project? Seeing none, I don't think we have need for rebuttal. Oh, yes, please take the, take the podium. A wink show of hands. Yes, just in time, please. I'm Chris Lewis. I live at 938 Reynolds Avenue here in Ripon. Um, we just had some questions. We did not know what the hours of operation would be. I was told that the other storage units in Ripon, I think, are till 11 p.m., I believe. Okay. So I had emailed a couple people, and I, they, at that point, didn't know what the hours would be. Okay. Great question. Anything else? Um, so are they going to have a sidewalk? there on parallel in front of the storage unit because my question is is that where the river people are going to start parking then because on reynolds we have permit parking mm -hmm. so we don't know if that's going to open up having uh you know that's i think you'd answer there's not really a parking lot because they will find the parking lot they park way down at um like ripping smog and walk down Right. So I, we were just wondering, I mean, is that going to be lined up with cars all weekend? People are going to take advantage now that there's a, a curb there. You know, Good right question. now it's no parking with dirt. So. I think okay. I've read and we've got reported that there's going to be, they're going to provide signage all up and down that road that says no parking, which I think RPD would ticket. Right, Ken? You want to address that, Ken? Those questions? Yeah, if you, yeah. So um, as far as hours, I'll let the applicant speak speak about the hours. Okay. I'm not sure what hours on that. But as far as parking, Parallel Avenue will be no parking, like it is. It's it's zoned. It's actually will be striped for a Class Two bike path. So that's uh, Class Two is is where it's just adjacent to the road. There's one lane of travel in each direction with a Class Two bike path on each side, which would provide access down to the bike bridge uh, in both directions there, and then uh, no parking along Parallel. As far as Reynolds, um, let me kind of zoom in on that for you. Reynolds, it would be wide enough for parking, probably from obviously where the wall is now um, to the end, uh, to the end towards Parallel Avenue, but wherever the emergency access would be, they would not be allowed to block that. So there would be some additional parking that would, would crop up possibly um, along Reynolds um, outside of the, I think the uh, permitted area so that's that's uh what would um, be striped out there okay. so just a handful of additional spaces yeah i mean it's uh I'd, let me figure out what the depth there is on the on the parcel but um, yeah you're probably 
with the emergency access driveway, four to five cars possibly that the western, I guess, side of, of Reynolds Avenue. Okay. And do we have a, a standard for hours of operation adhered to? Um, we don't. So our, our basically business, any business open between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. that is within 500 feet of residential has to use permit. This is not a use permit application, so they cannot be hours be open between those hours. Um, but besides that, I, they have not indicated what hours they wish they, that they're planning to operate. And okay. this permit, we wouldn't be limiting them. I just know I've had several neighbors contact me over the last few weeks, very concerned about it being open so late, being in a residential area. Um, Cause you know, I just, that's why we, I was hoping to find out. So. We'll ask that question directly to the applicant. Okay. Any other questions? I don't, I don't. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Alan Stokey at 836 Reynolds. Um, you don't really see my house there, but we're the uh, Manly and um, Reynolds intersect. There's an intersection there. And what we have is we have many people coming down on the bike path. When they can't find this parking space, they come down and they do a U-turn right at that intersection. And has anybody done a study to see how the uh, traffic would affect Reynolds Avenue? Because the last thing we want is somebody getting frustrated, coming around the corner, making a U-turn with the trailer, getting all frustrated. We see that on a continuous basis as it is now, even though we have the signs, thanks to Chris, that's been put up, but we would like um, more traffic control. And those parking spaces you just mentioned on Reynolds, um, those are U-turns. Every one of them are a U-turn and uh, we'd like U-turn sign and uh, a study to see how it would affect traffic because it's already an issue. <clears throat> Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, one more thing. Please go right ahead. Um, I really like high walls. I'd like to see that go from eight to 10 feet so we don't see so much mm -hmm. of the rooftops. Um, if you'd consider that, that'd be uh, Good thing. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak? Please. I'm Nancy Stokey, and I have been in the community time. I serve on your Ripon Police Department as a volunteer. I have lived here almost six years now as a resident. And my first question is, to your backyard, if you had to look down at a mini storage unit, which I don't have to because I'm across the street, but I feel for the people that are on Manly that are back to it, all of it. There are storage units that have higher walls, have better aesthetics as far as the landscape and things like that. Ripon is a place where we care about our community. And I'm trying to ask you this. We've tried to improve the river area by putting in parking permits to slow people down, to have people not walk down our street as a residential, in injuring possibly children that are playing nearby, having people that we don't know walk down our streets, leaving trash, garbage. We need insurance. This is going to be something that's going to improve the area, hold the value of the homes that are there, raise the level of the community. I know it's a tax base, but is it the best tax base is what I'm asking you. We already have trouble for different kinds of uh, community clients that come through the, the open from Salida, Ripon. There's things down parallel that could be improved like the hotel and things like that. I want you to think about raising the standard of the project if you're going to do it, or maybe even possibly putting a wall across Reynolds <clears throat> to block off the storage unit. 
in general. You will have speeders. You'll have people that will violate and it'll go on and on. I've lived in communities that where it was narrow streets, people didn't honor the police department. We have a good one here and we thank God for them. And I'm proud to be part of this. I'm just asking you to please accept, please understand. We have grandchildren that come over. We want to see our community grow with people, with younger children. But that could be a dangerous situation with a storage unit there. And also the fact that it could be good if it was done properly in the landscape and the whole idea of it being enclosed was properly done. But you do have to consider the manly that do live up against that. Okay, thank you. Very good, thank you. And thank you for your service to our community. I have a couple questions for you. you want I have a couple questions for you. Me? Yes. So um, you, you mentioned the kinds of people that are going to be taking We have items a lot of people that aren't from our community. May I, may that I, may I, may I finish okay. the question? Uh, the kinds of people that will be taking items to a storage unit, I guess uh, storage units are of uh, a, a particular problem. Uh, no, but the, the, the whole thing with the traffic would be one thing. They will, they, they will be, won't they be coming in, in traveling uh, yes. southeast and down parallel, making a left-hand turn into the project, uh, either picking up or, or storing their items and then and going back the same route? Well, we would hope when people get lost off the freeways, they're coming down our streets, they're speeding trucks, trying to find a way to get through. Um, they think there's a freeway access through there. And so oftentimes we have people like my husband had expressed, come down, they get frustrated, they see it around, they turn around, they loop back, they do it in front of Chris's house, even further down too. So those are people likely who are trying to access the, the bike bridge and the recreation area. This but is we're also bringing in a situation where you're going to have more people moving in, moving out. I'm just asking you, as my husband asked, having a study done, aesthetics of the whole thing, from lighting to the walls to the height to the consideration of who's going to be living behind. Question is, you mentioned noise. I didn't realize there was noise associated with a new storage operation. I mean, opening a door and moving some items, but there, there, there is, it just depends on there how aren't late loud at night. noises being associated with that, are there? I don't know, of course, that there's oftentimes people that live in storage units. I'm, I'm just saying there's, I'm there's a possibility that, of that all will, that. Yeah, but that what I'm not saying is the later it goes, the louder it gets for the people that live behind. I'm just saying what to do to to balance that sound going back to their house, to their residential. Okay, in fact, I would think the units would mitigate some noise from the freeway. Um, they'll now- It's possible. They'll now intercept some of that freeway noise, so. It's possible. Okay. I, I, have a, I don't know if you're gonna like it, but it's, um, so it's actually kind of a blessing having a storage center go there because this place is known for a number of things that could go there. And a storage is probably your best bet when it comes to noise. Well, a church, an office set of buildings. Well, and we don't really get to pick things like that, though. We just, we have rules. I'm we not have saying guidelines. don't put it there. I'm yeah. just saying consider the people that have to live there and how you zone it, how you speeds, the, the sound, all of it, the site, everything that it goes into it. That's a rough neighborhood. And there is often at night, people go down to the river. You know, I mean, there's buildings that have gotten broken down there. All I'm asking you is to please consider maybe just raising the standards a little bit. Also thinking about, you know, high wall, the whole thing. So we don't have to see it, landscape it properly. I mean, there's some really nice ones if you look around in Modesto 
do we really need another storage unit? I don't know. We hear those questions a lot. Okay. They don't really apply okay. to us. That's okay. our job. It's not our job. What but again, all I ask, do you have a storage unit in your backyard? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Someone else? Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Director. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm Chris Madsen. I live at 480 Laurelwood Lane, uh, so not too far from this project. Uh, thank you to the bulletin who made me aware of this meeting this evening. So read your local news and then get engaged. I don't know that I'm actually speaking in opposition because I haven't had time to think much about this project until my wife texted me the article. Um, but I do, there are certainly some things for those living in the neighborhood that would find it objectionable. And I don't think that this is the thing that I would like built down the street from the, the NIMBY speak as to this issue. I'm just say, I grew up in Ripon. I spent some time away and moved back three years ago because spending time in Washington, DC, I spent some time thinking about big issues and how we solve them. The answer is actually, I think we solve them locally with people having a dialogue like this one. So thank you for the opportunity to converse with you. And think about issues at the local level and how we neighborhood is not just being Reynolds to Laurelwood and East Parallel, but Ripon as a community. That's why I decided to move back here. So my question, great question, and then think about is, what have you considered or have been proposed for this particular lot? Because this use may be acceptable. It may be approved by city staff, and they may necessary mitigation, mitigating measures to make it you know, a little more dressy than it is now, but is it the best use? And you can tell me it's, it's not your job to decide that, and then I'll ask whose it is. But let's think about these limited resources we have, whether there are a few lots in these core areas, so how do we to enrich our community? And I've said to you, I'd like you to try to make the argument that a public storage unit enriches it. It's certainly profitable, but the neighborhood isn't any better for it being there, right? We've got a great bike line, uh, regionally popular. People are going by it all the time, Saturday and Sunday. Um, the river underutilized. We need to develop that area such that restaurant, retail space, people would want residents. Um, but that this project is encouraging it. I'd be late in time, this ship may have sailed, but I'd invite the commissioners to think about that in future projects. It may be possible, acceptable, but should it be built and ought it be built in our community or can we do better? And I submit to all of you, we can do better than this. Thank you. Thank you. Vaughn. Uh, it wouldn't be my first choice. the market makes the decision. And this is a use that is acceptable in the zoning. Uh, they've gone through the entire process with our planning department. That checks all the boxes. We have not had other projects for what has been, by the way, I live just down the street from you. I'm very familiar with a three and a half acre field of weeds that's existed ever since we moved in uh, 15 years ago. No, this is not my first choice, but it is the choice right now. There are no other options. So uh, as was stated earlier, we're not as a planning commission in a position to pick and choose uh, what kind of project goes there as long as it complies. Uh, then at that point we make a decision is this an appropriate project for the parcel? And in this case, it is. Um, sure, would it be nice to have restaurants and retail there? I'm all in favor. We've had no one uh, come forth proposing that. 
putting the dollars down. So the answer to your question again is the market makes that decision. These folks have purchased the parcel. They're ready to move forward. Our job is to look at the findings of the staff report and see if those, if we can agree with those findings. If we cannot agree with those findings, then we have an issue and we can vote against the project. If the project meets the findings of the staff report, this land has already been zoned in a particular way. And if we cannot disagree with those findings, we really don't have any ground to disapprove of the project under those conditions. That's helpful to understand your role. Um, may I ask a question then if Ken? Ask it to me and, and we can fold in that question. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So at what point in the process would it be appropriate for some member of city staff or someone else to say, we would like something different there? Your project makes economic sense. The market is speaking, but in terms of our duty as caretakers of Ripon, as city staff or members of the city council, would su suggest that we can't approve this and we can't let it go forward in good conscience. So where's that check? That check, I would say, is in our findings. I'll let Ken tell you, but I would say that check is in our findings right here with Issuance of the permit will not be significantly detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or be injurious to the property improvements of adjacent properties. I can't go against that finding with this project. Mr. Chairman, and I was I asking if someone outside of the commission prior to it make coming here and you deciding that the findings are adequate would be in a position to push back. I, I'd putting like it to, another way, I, who's setting the vision for land use? Okay, I'd, I'd like only the market that's inadequate. Yeah, let us answer your question. I'd, I'd like to address that as well. Um, I've, I've lived in Ripon for 65 years, so <laughs> a little longer than all the rest of you. Oh, yeah, I'm not okay, Ripon, so um, and Ken has lived here his whole life, and I will have to say, as having served on the com planning commission for a number of years and then off of it for a while and then back on. He guards Ripon probably better than anybody else does. Probably the biggest critic I hear of Mr. Zydevart is that he's too picky about what we do in Ripon. And he, he guards the um, housing development. He guards the business development very, very, very closely. And I think as a planning commission, you know, we, we all feel the same way. And, and I get it. I get it when you're living in a house where there's a vacant lot and you don't like what's going in there. But when you bought the house, you knew there was a vacant lot. So, and you knew what it was zoned. Um, so, so I don't have, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't have a lot of sympathy for that. And, and I think these gentlemen have already explained what our job is. It's not our job to go out and find a restaurant or a retail store, which would actually bring in way more traffic and a lot more people to your area than this self storage is gonna bring. So. I don't know. Ken may want to speak to that too, but no. just, uh, just one excuse correct. Me. Excuse me. Let's let us address the questions that have been asked already, please. Thank you. So, Chris, just to answer uh, one of your questions about who decides that, that's actually a city council sets the direction for uh, land use zoning. So, you zone land accordingly residential, heavy industrial, light industrial, commercial, office. Those decisions are made when they look at the general plan maps. Um, that was done in 2006. Typically, you try to tackle that every 20 to 30 years, 15 maybe, depending on your growth. If you grow fast enough, you might have to take a look at that general plan map and start. So those are the times, I think, when the city council sets that direction. Um, they can certainly look at different areas of town in, in the interim and, and decide they want to go a different direction and rezone properties. Within each of those zoning districts, uh, in which you, in the zoning district is allowable uses that can go in there. So when when a use comes in that meets the requirements of that zoning district is when they have to basically abide by all the standards that we have. Um, and we look at the projects that way. So if they're checking, like they, the, the commission mentioned, if they meet the zoning district requirements and check all the boxes, there is a there's findings that they have to be made for a project to be approved. And if they meet all those findings, then they, they get approved. So that's the answer to that question. It's the city council that really sets that direction. And, Thank and you. I'll tell you, Chris, I, I, I do actually sympathize with you. You bought your dream home next to a vacant lot. Maybe your realtor told you what it was zoned for. Maybe they didn't. You were just so happy with the home. My house is surrounded by orchards. 
It's not always going to be surrounded by orchards, but we're going to enjoy them while we can. But someday they are going to come down and they're going to put whatever they're going to put up there. And we just, we just have to be happy with that. That is the way it is when you're, when you live next to a zone like this, it is the way it is. It's unfortunate in this situation, but that it's, it's that simple. It is what it is. Very good. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Ken, uh, response, answer my question. I thank you for that. I do want to just make one clarification that I don't seek to impugn the commission or city staff in any way. And I'm not complaining because it's next to my house because frankly, it's not, Right. <laughs> but it's in Ripon. And like you, I care about Ripon and I like to ask questions so that we can have meaningful conversations, which I think this is maybe perhaps as annoying as it might be, no, I, but I don't seek to frustrate you in any way. It's good that people understand what our role is and, and how things happen. So no, no offense taken. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay. Um, Gary, you asked my wife, what kind of people go to the storage units? When we moved to town here, we put our items into a, a storage unit for two months. And um, I hate to say this, but some of the characters down there really scared me. And I do have a birdhouse at home that um, a homeless guy that lived in the storage unit here in town, or um, spent a lot of time there. He gave me a birdhouse for it. So I do have that. And I'm, when I finish the backyard, I am going to put it up just as a reminder to live right and uh, don't do drugs or you'll end up there. But um, are you prepared to have extra police come? Because these people, the, I don't want to sound like I'm putting these people down because I was one of them at one time putting my stuff in a storage unit. But when I put the stuff in the storage unit, I wasn't a member of the community here. I was a stranger here and I could have been anybody or done anything. And you're gonna bring in quite a few people from out of town. And we already suffer with people from, um, well, let's put it from different communities. Last time I spoke up here, I got lectured by one of your members stating that this isn't Salida anymore that this is ripping. Well, down at the river, I hate to say it, but it's it blows past Salida. You're talking Stockton, Oakland, some of the most vicious places on the earth in town that we have people coming from these places. We're gonna have more of them now. Are you prepared to stand and protect the community is my question. So you have my sympathy and I know exactly what you're talking about. And there are a lot of people, most of the people, in fact, the vast majority of the people who spend time down by the bridge are not from the community. They're not. And, I, and I'm well aware of that. You're adding more strangers to our life. Okay. That, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure you can say that with a lot of certainty. My sense is that people who are going to store items in a Ripon storage facility are very likely from Ripon know that for a fact no I don't, I don't I'm, I'm speculating but but I, I I'd be willing to make a bet that that's going to be the case are you willing to put up extra police and protection to back those words up that's all I'm asking so I and I, I do not know the associated uh, police activity around storage units I guess I was of the opinion there wasn't much perhaps the logs, there's already a lot of activity there we're going to be adding to it the police logs. Sir, um, sir, it was every single one of these applica applications mm -hmm. and, and there's there's nothing in here from him that would be alarming. Yeah. Not, no, I'm just saying it as a concerned citizen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I honestly I think a lot of your guys' concerns right now are are directed at the problem that you have down there currently. And I don't think this project is gonna add to that. I think your concerns are definitely valid but they're not valid for us. That is for city council. I think I heard him talking about it like three or four meetings ago that they were gonna start looking into that area to help you guys out. But I, I think that's where your concerns mm -hmm. are. And I don't think this business is gonna to add to those. This is just a business. Okay. People are gonna to go to that business and then they're getting out of there. Yeah. The people that are doing those U-turns and stuff like that, 
that problem is not going to go away by denying this project. And yeah, perhaps a uh, no U-turn sign would be in order. Um, but yeah, but that's that's my concern. I'm not against this really per se. I'm really not. It's just, are we prepared for what we are inviting into the community? Well, I appreciate your voice and your concerns. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. <clears throat> Very good. Anyone else that would like to speak? Would the applicant like to respond? Roman Acosta again, JB Anderson, uh, 139 South Stockton here in Ripon. Um, we are thankful for all the comments and concerns voiced by the community. Um, our plans for hours of operation, um, they're not been solidified yet. However, the um, zoning code does not allow us to operate between the hours of 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. as previously stated as well as the city does have an adopted noise ordinance that we will be required to comply with at all times. Um, also, another thing regarding the noise is, um, I mean, we were out there with our project team and we were walking the site um, out with our utility guys. And I mean, even to have a conversation out there, I mean, we were screaming at each other almost. So we think this use is a great use to actually buffer from how the loud traffic that you can hear on Highway 99. Um, also, we heard some concerns regarding traffic. Um, the ingress egress point is onto Parallel Avenue, and we do expect folks to go north on Parallel and not utilize Reynolds Drive. Um, and we do not expect, you know, 255 trips at once. Um, usually, the traffic associated with the self storage use is one or two cars in there getting their stuff, dropping stuff off, and, and they're getting out of there. They're not, we're not trying to create a big uh, traffic log for the community. Um, again, this is a um, light industrial zoned property. Um, our use is within that zoning and um, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Hold on, let me see if we have other comments. Yeah, can you describe, so there was a question about lighting. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think you've finalized your lighting plan, but uh, is it the intent and will the owner execute a lighting plan that will uh, have a minimal impact on neighbors adjacent to the project. Yes, I do believe that's a condition of approval um, when improvement, or it, it might just be required when improvement plans are submitted, but all lighting will be required to shade away from the residents and nor do we want to impact them at all. So yes, we will comply with another, all lighting standards. Another question was the height of the wall and have you and your client considered that? Yes, we have. Um, for the southerly portion, it is around eight feet and it actually does jog up a bit to nine feet and it is an existing wall. So we didn't want to add more weight, have to do more engineering. Um, so we do believe that eight to nine foot wall is um, sufficient. It is also in conformance with the city zoning code as, as stand as it stands now. Also, do you know if you, are you going to be planting any trees along that back wall? Um, we don't plan on it because we don't want the roots and whatnot to interfere with the engineering of the wall, as well as it's really hard to upkeep a, a really small landscape strip. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we are kind of pressed for space due to those easements. So we did our best to um, maximize the space as well as um, beautify the frontage. So folks traveling along parallel um, we're not trying to create an eyesore here either. Um, we have a very um, intense landscape plan. We are above the city's standard of 10%. Um, we are providing wrought iron decorative fencing um, eight feet along Reynolds Avenue. Um, so we believe that we have a um, sufficient landscape plan. Uh, Ken, you said you received a letter uh, from an adjacent owner regarding the trash enclosure. Is that correct? Yeah, that was part of the uh, packet uh, in, in comment letters that one of the neighbors uh, submitted a comment regarding the trash enclosure. I think it was a neighbor that backs up to that parcel. Okay. And have you, Ms. Roman, have you looked at that and considered if there's an alternative to placing that trash enclosure uh, on that back wall? Yeah, we did, but just with the truck turning radiuses, that's really the only location for it. 
Um, we tried it. We, we did try to move some stuff around, but it just didn't fit. And because we can't put any buildings within the easements, we're kind of pressed in that location. Let me follow up on that if I could, please, because uh, I'm that location is uh, is disadvantageous, I think, to the the property owner behind that spot in that they're going to have at a particular time of the day trash truck backing into there picking that the, the trash container up shaking it making a lot of noise and um sure i don't think that's going to be real pleasing to the the occupant of the property back behind it when you say you have looked at it and there are no other locations um seems like this is a pretty big lot and there would be other um, identifiable spots for that. It might cost you a unit or two, mm -hmm. but it does seem like um, that that is within the realm of possibilities. Um, it would be my suggestion that you work with city staff to see, to work a little harder, see if you could locate a spot to get it off of that back wall and not um, subject the neighbor to that kind of noise. Um, uh, is that something you would commit to working with the staff on that? Yeah, we, we could commit to working with staff for an alternative location if that location isn't uh, sufficient. Okay. Um, there is just not too many locations because no matter where we put it along, the, if we were to put it along the back, um, it would be potentially impactful. Um, it, there, there are garbage trucks that, that come around to every residence and, and there is some noise associated with that. Um, I don't think any of the noise would be out of the ordinary than what is already um, in the area. I do agree there is a su sufficient, <laughs> or there is a, a substantial amount of noise that comes from just freeway traffic in the area. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to subject someone to more noise than is absolutely necessary, so thank you. Have you asked PG&E uh, if they would consider allowing you to build a trash enclosure uh, on their easement? No, that, that's something that we can discuss. Um, Rick, Rick Mummert with uh, Benchmark Engineering would like to say a few things. Okay. So, good evening. Rick Mummert, Benchmark Engineering, 915 17th Street, Modesto, applicant. Um, we've gone through, Matt Rogers is with me tonight also, project manager on the project. And we've had a lot of projects recently where we had, we've come across PG&E easements. They won't allow anything in it. They, we can't have walls. Uh, in this particular case, relative to a structure. We can pave it, we can keep it as long as we're below the existing ground elevation, we can't have anything higher. But um, one of the things, Ken, that, you know, in working with staff, Matt and I were just talking about, we, we have a really good place for it. The easement for the sewer lift station um, actually doesn't coincide with the fenced of the portion of the lift station. And if you can zoom into that, kind of like that southeast corner of the lift station area. Yeah. If you would allow us, the reason why we have the buildings up against the city's easement right there, where it says proposed eight foot high wrought iron fence. If the city, since we don't encroach the fenced area of the, the uh, lift station, we could put the trash enclosure right there. The truck pulls in, lifts, pulls the trash out. And then if the fire truck turning radiuses that you see there, can make it for a fire truck it definitely could uh work there for a, a, a trash a, a trash enclosure uh and a and a truck that okay. if you allow that encroachment that's going to be an easier uh a do, doable item rather than the uh pg e easement and it's a great location for it and this is the kind of discussion that i'm asking for you to have with city staff it's exactly what i'd like you to we're not going to settle that tonight Mm -hmm. But I think would would I make that a term? Uh, yeah, I would. I would term of think, condi or uh, conditional. Yeah, I think you can add, add that condition. It could work with city. I'm not in a position to answer if that could be allowed in that spot right. yet or not, Rick. But that's something we can kind of flush through. Okay. We'd yeah. be happy so to we can make that, that a condition level. of approval with an understanding that if that does does not work, then I guess the commission still wants it off that back wall and some other location. Is what yes. I'm understanding. Okay. So that is if that's correct. Fine, we can work on trying to figure out if that would work or not. Yeah. That's fine. That's my opinion. Whether that's the, the opinion of the uh, my fellow commissioners is another subject. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Then I will close the uh, public portion of the meeting and we'll have uh, some discussion. 
comments? No? Okay. I believe we have minimum eight of an eight foot wall in the back currently. And we have a building that's only a 12 foot height. So there's not gonna be a whole lot to see over the top of that wall. I, that, to me, I don't find that objectionable. I don't know if anyone else does. And we've talked about parking. Some of the questions that came up, there'll be no parking signs there. Okay. What would it take to have the, the uh, police department look at that and put, perhaps put up a no, no U-turn sign? Um, that would be something that you could, could include in your motion if, you, if they think it's acceptable or, or appropriate spot to have a no U-turn sign. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm well, not really I want to ask you about that, Kenny, because I'm not, uh, that doesn't strike me as something that's within our purview on this that's project. That's my question too. It's not. Plus there's a lot of factors to think there too. I mean, so instead of making a U-turn now, they are going to be driving through people's neighborhoods if they even obey the law. But I think that's outside of our depth. And would you comment on that? Yeah, my guess would be, I mean, the, the police department definitely doesn't want to put up signs that they can't um, enforce. Um, I think it's more of an enforcement issue of, of residents there contacting the police department, uh, dealing with some of the issues might that might even be there now uh, with no new turns. If that's a, a serious matter uh, that needs to be dealt with at some point, whether it's this... Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was the storage unit or not. I mean, you're, I think there's people doing that now, then it should be something that's brought up to the police department. Uh, and they make the choice of whether they should be putting signs up or not, uh, whether it's enforceable. So I think that, that'd that be kind of the um, avenue I would pursue that, is have the residents contact the police department. We have significant landscape investment along Reynolds there and all across the, the front on, on parallel that will I think add to the you know curb appeal of, of the area beyond a vacant lot. I don't have any objections as far as um, what this is going to look like and, and the landscape that's included. No, they're having three more. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, seeing none, but anyone would like to, would one of the commissioners like to make a motion? Uh, I will make a motion that we approve the major site plan permit, uh, SR 21-36 for the parallel south storage. Based on the findings and subject to the conditions, uh, I'd like to add to the conditions um, that we um, have the approval um, for the applicant to work with city staff to move the trash enclosure and um, that we adopt the negative declaration for the project. Would that change? Uh, I'll maybe modify that just a little bit. Move the trash enclosure away, away uh, so that it's wall. from the back wall, yeah. so it's not adjacent to any neighbors. That, right, yeah. yeah, sorry. Do we have a second? I'll second. Good, the motion passes uh, four to zero. Thank you for your uh, interest in Ripon and adding to our, our community, we appreciate it. And thank you all for your comments. Yeah, thank uh, you for the residents for coming. Yes, That's we important. really appreciate yeah. the participation. And um, again, we have uh, our roles to fulfill and there are other roles and other places that you can make impact as well. I would encourage you to continue to do so. Thank you. Ken, do we have any uh, reports? Uh, just uh, really quick, thank you for coming in for a special meeting uh, on this. Um, we do have a couple items coming up in July, the July 19th meeting. Um, one is for Diamond Pet Foods. They're looking to add a, a warehouse facility to their parcel back there uh, since they did get approval of their fourth production line. Um, so yeah, they will be. 
<laughs> they will be adding about 131,000 square foot uh, warehouse, concrete tilt up warehouse on their site. That's Tom. Tom, Tom had an announcement. <laughs> that's not, and, that's uh, not exactly a tough shed, is it, Ken? <laughs> no, 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 it's not a tough shed. <laughs> and then uh, secondly, we will be bringing up um, some items for a potential amendment to our dimension regulations ordinance uh, pertaining to detached accessory structures. Uh, the council had some concerns that they wanted the commission to kind of vet out uh, and see what the commission's opinion on that would be to send back to city council. So got those two items uh, for the commission for July and that's about it. A lot of projects going on right now. That is the 19th, correct? Right? Just accessory uh, structures. So, and that's July 19th, you said? Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, any commissioner's reports? No. Do we have a city attorney's report? I just uh -huh. bring you greetings from our, our little law firm's uh, Pacific Northwest Bureau. Um, <laughs> I, I've been sentenced here for another couple of months, and so I'll serve out my time, but... Uh, Wish I could have been there with you personally, but it's a long ride in a station wagon, let me tell you. <laughs> Tom, are you enjoying the nice cool temperatures in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> this week? Thank, thanks for that reminder, Gary. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Without air conditioning, it, it was pretty uh, it was pretty tough over here for a while. Yeah. Well, good to see you, Tom. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting me participate this way. Absolutely. Uh, if we have nothing else, we will be adjourned then. Thank you guys.